Okay, hi and welcome to the first European Teams uh, user group meeting. Uh, we should have had one last month, but unfortunately that was had to be cancelled due to some uh, circumstances. And um, it's me and my fellow mate Chris Hoard hosting this uh, these meetings. And um, I think we should do like a brief presentation of both. Uh, my name is Adam Deltinger, uh, located in Malmo in Sweden. Uh, I work as a modern workplace consultant. Uh, mostly focusing on user adoption, trainings, and many of, uh, of many of the services within the Office 365 suite. Um, I spend most time in Teams, though. Um, I do a lot of the technology behind it as well. Um, in my spare time, I uh, tend to spend a lot of time in the Office 365 and Teams community, uh, and also in the, a very active contributor in the uh, tech community as well. All right, that's me. Uh, Chris, take it from there. Thanks, Adam. Uh, my name is Chris Hoard. Uh, like Adam, I'm a modern workplace consultant. Um, so my background is a, a lot in Office 365 and more recently Microsoft 365. Um, I before I was worked in IT, I was actually a, a school teacher. So you know, I still have a big background in in training, and so I'm an MCT as well. Um, I my experience with Teams has been from the the very start, so for for about two years now. Uh, and for me, uh, like everyone here, is something that I'm very passionate about. And again, the same as Adam, uh, I'm involved a lot in the tech community uh, and in the um, communities of Microsoft Teams, Office 365 and Microsoft 365. So very excited to be here and, and very excited to uh, kick things off and, and get this going on a recurring basis. So I guess uh, as well as kind of introducing ourselves, it would also be good um, about the purpose uh, and how this user group came about. Uh, and I think it would be um, right to say that this came from the Microsoft tech community. Um, I have met several people uh, like Adam and Rick uh, and Vesa uh, and, and many others in the tech community that are really, really passionate uh, about Microsoft Teams, Office 365, Microsoft Azure, I mean the whole stack. Uh, uh, but what we kind of noticed as well is that a lot of these very passionate people uh, were in the European area. So we, we you know, Adam and I uh, had a discussion about this and, and we thought that it would be great to set up a user group um, for both teams professionals and evangelists across the whole European area. Uh, user groups typically tend to be local but we thought that there could be a lot of value with knowledge sharing from right across the European area um, because there, there are just so many passionate people to do this. So at this moment, we envision that to be uh, once a month where we have two to three speakers. Um, and in the future, it could be more than that, um, but this is a, um, all to do with participation. So the larger that the user group sessions are, um, and we could look to do more, but also as well for every single person in this user group, if they have ideas, to submit them back to us because we want this user group to be for you as well as for us. So I think that would probably be a good time um, to hand over to Adam to uh, introduce our speakers today and we're, we're very excited uh, to have them it's, it's, and, and it'll be something of real value today. Yeah, uh, yeah of course. Uh, this one speakers is uh, Rick Ron Russell and Vesa Nopanen, uh, both MVPs uh, for Office Apps and Services. And uh, we will start off by Rick doing his speak and it's, uh, it will be about like uh, development uh, in Teams. And Vesa is doing a speak about tips and tricks uh, for Microsoft Teams as well. Okay, uh, with no further ado, I think, Rick, are you ready to start off? Yep, I'm ready. That's great. Thanks, Adam. So uh, give me one sec to share my screen. There we go. I think everybody has a visual now. <clears throat> Everybody, you can see my screen. Everything's okay. Yes. Okay. Good. So, how to start with Microsoft Teams development? Um, so, this is the first of a few sessions. We're going to start real slow and real low level, so that everybody's up to pace. So, if it's a little too low level or a little too high level for your 
taste, then uh, visit us the next time and then we'll go a little bit deeper. So first of all, if you want to start with uh, Microsoft Teams development, you can pick your poison, like I said here. So if you're a C Sharp developer, there's ways to develop with C Sharp for Microsoft Teams. Or if you're a Node.js TypeScript developer, then there's also a lot of ways to start with that one. Now, first of all, we need to prepare our Office 365 tenant. So yeah, we need an Office 365 tenant, otherwise we don't have teams. So uh, we need to have one of the following plans. So business essentials, business premium, enterprise developer, or education, education plus. I think the best way to get started is to get an Office 365 developer subscription. I'll uh, share the slide deck with Adam later on, and the link is behind that to start a developer subscription. I think you get uh, five E3 licenses with your developer subscription for a year, so uh, that's more than enough to start with Teams development. Now, first of all, we need to turn on Microsoft Teams, of course, yeah, if this is still required for your tenant, because it, if you yeah, if you have an old tenant, then it could be that you have to turn it on. If you have a new tenant, then like I said here, so if you have a new tenant and it's lower than 500 people, like, then 500 seats it will automatically be Teams. But yeah, if you have an older tenant, then, then it could be that Sky for Business still turned on. Uh, we'll turn on side loading for apps and we need to optionally turn on the developer preview that's something you sometimes you need it sometimes you don't i'll quickly show you how it's done because yeah it changes every day so uh, we're recording this session i bet you that in a month's time this it will be wrong because yeah it, i had to look for it myself it used to be uh, that you had to go. So this is the admin portal of Office 365. I think everybody knows this one. It used to be that you had to go to services and add-ins. And then there was something called Microsoft Teams. Here it is. And then it was like only turn on and that was it. And then more and more and more settings came on. And then as you can see now, my, my tenant is already semi-migrated to Microsoft Teams. So I already have the Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business Admin Center. But if you open this one up, there's nothing about apps in here yet. So they're still building that one. So I'm guessing within a month it will be. But now it's still, uh, so I cannot select these settings. I cannot select, I can only select if I go to apps, these settings I can turn on. So you need to allow external apps in Microsoft Teams, turn that on and allow side loading of external apps. So side loading of external apps, I mean with that, that, um, you can uh, upload an app to your personal Teams environment and you don't need an administrator. Okay, if it's your own development environment, you're also an administrator, but you don't need an admin to deploy it to the entire um, tenant. You can just run it in your own Teams environment. And of course, this is not working. So if you go to the new Teams environment, the Teams admin environment, if it loads, there we go. There's nothing about apps in here yet. So I'm guessing that will come. So if it's not here, within a month's time, then look here and then there you can find it. So, ah yeah, and the developer preview, if you go to Teams, normally I should have Teams here somewhere. There we go. There should be, because that changed as well. It used to be down here, but nowadays it's around, around here. And then just click here, developer preview. I'm not gonna do this because Teams needs to restart when I click it, so then when I would be kicked out of the meeting. So we're not gonna do that one. You don't need it for per se, but sometimes if you want uh, some kind of preview features and you're developing against preview features, then of course you need that. Now, like I said, uh, you probably already, if you have a new tenant, Teams will be activated. Now, um, a little bit about the architecture of Teams. So uh, the Teams client, so the thing we all use on our uh, Windows machine or, or Mac is uh, built with Electron. So Electron is a wrapper around code that is written with HTML5, CSS, Angular, jQuery, Lodash, TypeScript, Node. So this is actually the things that we know as developers. So Teams is just built. It's nothing special, nothing fancy. It's just built with the tools that we already know, except of course for the mobile. The iPhone is built directly in, in uh, Swift and the Android is of course directly built in the uh, Java code. Yeah, and the Windows Phone app, I'm not sure. Does anybody know if it still exists? I think it's not supported anymore. Maybe you can download it still, but yeah, who has a Windows Phone? So then in the backend Teams, well, Teams is built on top of Azure. So this uses as again, the same services that, that that we use when we build against Azure or when we build against Office 365 and we need something to 
you know, if I need to store my data, I get, get a storage account in Azure, or if I need a website, I build an app service in Azure, or if I um, want to authenticate and I use Azure Active Directory. So all these items that you see here are exactly the same. So Teams is built on the same tools that we can use as developers. So, and of course, most important thing that you see here, all this is in the cloud. So Teams is built for a cloud first environment. So uh, you can, of course, like it said here, massive scale support. Yeah, you can scale this if you have a uh, credit card that's big enough, <laughs> then you can scale this limit and endlessly. And uh, of course it's the redundant and disaster recovery, but okay, this is about Teams architecture. I just want to point out that Teams uses the same backend things that we're going to use when we start developing. So it will be the same items connected to each other. Now, let's start building. That's what we're here for. So whenever we build something for Teams, we need two items. First item we need oh, is called the manifest. Now, what is, as you can see here, it's a lot of JSON with a lot of configuration. Well, what, what does it do? Well, it describes the functionality of our Teams app. So it tells Teams, okay, I have my app. This is the name of my app. This is the description of my app. My app may hold a bot or may hold a tab. So it describes to Teams what's my app going to be like. It doesn't have any code, but it just describes what it's going to be like so Teams will know where to look for your app. And it's part of the definition you upload. So if you create a package that you upload to Teams as a Teams app, then a part of it is the manifest file. Other two parts of it, actually, it's just a simple, stupid zip file. The other two are uh, uh, icons, because yeah, you need to show an icon, of course. So <clears throat> what is this manifest file? Like I already said, it describes how the app integrates with Teams. So you need, of course, a name that's required. It needs to have a description. It needs to have a few icons, because otherwise Teams yeah, cannot work without the icons. It needs to have permission. So what will your app do with Teams? And it will need, if you connect to external domains, it will need some valid domains. Now the rest is all optional. So an app could be uh, could consist of a tab. It could consist of a static tab or a bot or a connector or a composer session. We'll go further into that later. But yeah, of course, one of those, uh, you do, you're not you don't have to build one of uh, all of them. You don't have to build. You can build one of them. Yeah. If you build none of them, then okay, you have an app that does nothing, but you have to at least one of them and then you can have built more and more and more if you want to. So what else do we need? We need the manifest file and then of course our code needs to run somewhere. So we need some kind of website or some kind of public available thing. So a website to host our code. Now I will show you, this is a manifest file. So this will get quite complicated quite fast. If you need to, okay, if you're a little bit more advanced, then you can just go to Google and just say in Google, okay, I need my Teams manifest file. There we go. There's probably somewhere on GitHub, or here we go, on the docs.microsoft.com, a sample full schema. You copy all of this and you start validating and changing everything yourself. Well, that's a lot of work and yeah, it can be, a, you can make, and a mistake quite easily. So what did the Teams team do? They made something that will help, that helps us quite a lot. They created something called the App Studio. So if it's not installed in your environment, you can click on the three dots, more apps, and then normally you should find it in the store. There we go, the App Studio. This is from Microsoft, no, so it's provided by Microsoft for us. Now, if we open this up, first of all, what do we get? Well. This is actually a Teams app, so it's a good example already of what a Teams app should look like, what it can do, what, what it can do. So the first thing you get is a conversation. So this is a bot they build into the Teams app. So as you can see here, type your questions here. So if I want to know something, this bot, I think it's connected to the uh, documentation of uh, Teams apps, de developing Teams apps. So if you want something, you can just ask it and it will search for you. Like I said here, how to build a button. I can also say, uh, how to uh, connect a bot to a Teams app or something like that. I have no idea if it finds something. There we go. Uh, there uh, you find most what you need here. Okay, so it gives me a link and there we go. We go to the developer.microsoft.com Teams app. So bot didn't know the answer, but yeah, that's some, that has, does have nothing to do with the Teams app. Then the second thing we see here is the manifest editor. Now this is quite useful. So instead of building the entire JSON file ourselves, we have like a quick 
wizard that will help us to, to create this manifest file. So if we click on create a new app, then it will ask, ask us all kinds of questions. First of all, okay, a short name, so Teams user group, long name, European Teams user group. Then of course, the app, as it says here, your app should have an idea. Well, this will help us just generate a new GUID. Then we can create a package name. So all this is required, as you can see. So if you are doing it manually in the JSON, then okay, then you can forget that it's required, maybe delete it. So this will help you a lot. So let's call it Teams UGU package or something. There we go, version 1.0.0. .0 .0. A long description, so short description, a long description. Yeah, it's all required. It's a lot of work in the beginning to fill it out, but then some developer information. So my name, I don't know, my company or something. There we go. Uh, one for privacy, one for terms of use. And then of course the branding, like I said here, this is what a manifest, uh, a, a Teams app package will hold. So it will hold the manifest, the things that I fill in here, and it will need two uh, icons, a big icon, 192, on, uh, onto 192, and 32 on 32. So that's the thing you see here, this small thingy, and this is the big one you see here. That's why you need it. And you can, of course, choose an accent color if you want them. So these are all the required things. Now, if I said, okay, I want to add a tab, I can add a bot, I can add connectors, message extensions. Let's make it super simple. I don't know, add a personal tab. So that's a tab just for me. So my personal tab, uh, I don't know, a unique ID. Just make up something. There we go, put in the website. And now we have a really simple uh, Teams application. Of course, we need to because uh, that's a kind of a security thing in teams so let's say for instance i build an app and it goes out of the teams environment into other domains well teams isn't gonna allow you to build something like that of course because yeah you can build like malicious apps who suddenly go to i don't know malicious websites where uh, you get the uh, paper clicks or uh, paper views and stuff like that so that's not gonna happen so you have to tell teams okay uh, teams already detected here even it said okay it looks like your tab is going to an uh, external domain it's not a microsoft domain so you have to enter a valid domain so it's a probably it's the same domain and this way teams will allow us to contact that domain now this normally takes there we go so valid domains and then as you can see a little bit later the it will ask when you install it okay and I already have an error short name should not contain keywords like microsoft so that means that i have my short name i mean no this is yeah ah, and cannot contain teams that's right that's right so whatever name you find it cannot contain teams so let's test and distribute again there we go we're good to go and then we can say okay let's test it immediately so i can install it immediately into my teams environment as you can see here privacy and permissions so that's the access it needs uh who built it that was me and so that's a little bit of information or you can download the app package and give that to your if you're done building in the end give it to your uh, administrator of the environment and he can deploy it or you can even submit it to the app store for approval so if you want to build a team app and submit it to the store so that people can start downloading it and using it then you can click on the submit sub button and it will automatically submit it to the store now we're just going to install this to my personal ten, uh, personal environment so i can set up the features i want uh, so i created a personal app that's the only thing i created let's open it up and there we go we have a website so pretty simple teams app now if i go back to my app studio i can say okay that was it and i can download that one and publish it and there we go i can edit it download it and we can go on and put, give that to my administrator now we have a few other things we also have a card editor so in teams you can use um, adaptive cards and they have like a, a card editor to help you debug or develop adaptive cards. So let's say I want a hero card, make it simple. So as you can see here, uh, a name, Q 
give in a card, maybe a subtitle. Hello from Teams. There we go. Maybe an image, maybe a button. Let's add a button. There we go. Now, this looks quite simple, but as you can see here, it's getting the JSON of a adaptive card is getting quite complicated quite fast. So uh, this is just yeah, to help you speed up your development. You can always create this manually, but yeah, why if something like this exists? Even if you're building in C sharp, here you go. This is the code to build this button. Or if you're building it from Node, this is the code to build this button. So that makes it a whole lot easier. So I can add more buttons and I can do whatever I want. I think I have, do I have this is also a hero card. Do I have something else than a hero card? No. Let's say, for instance, oh, home. Oh, I want to add an adaptive card. See, this is, if you're starting with adaptive cards, Building this from scratch, okay, <laughs> this will take you like an hour and now it takes me like two minutes and I can change something uh, here and I can see immediately see the preview. So let's say uh, publish adaptive or Matt's name. Let's delete that one. Let's put in Wick. There we go. I can see immediately see the changes, see the effects, what happens. So this will really help you along. Now, the last thing that we have is the control library. This is, yeah, you don't need it, it's nice to have. So let's say, for instance, a button, then you can say, okay, uh, I need this kind of button with this kind of icon, and it will give you the, how you will, how you need to style it. But it's all in the React component. So if you're building a React app, I don't use it that much. It's just to see, okay. I think it, if you're wireframing an app in the beginning, then it's easy to help with this. And you can say, okay, let's take a text box like this and it will look like this. And you can take a screenshot and then your wireframe will look more like Teams. So that was the App Studio. So it will help you build up the manifest, especially the manifest. Now, the next part I wanna talk about is NG Rock. So what's the problem with developing for Microsoft Teams? Well, Microsoft Teams runs in the cloud. So if I am developing, I uh, my development machine will run on local host. So as you can see here, I think I have Visual Studio running. There we go. I have Visual Studio running. So this is local host and then a port. So I can tell Teams go to local host and this port, but it will never reach it because Teams is actually running from the cloud. So why do I need? I need some kind of mechanism. Either I deploy immediately to, to my website every two minutes while I'm developing and I do like remote debugging, which is also possible, but not that simple. Or if you're behind a corporate firewall, it's even worse. So that's why we need ng Rock. So ng Rock will create, will give you an online URL, somewhere a random URL, and it will create a tunnel to your local machine. So it will connect your local machine to a random URL, and that way you can start debugging and uh, developing against Teams. So in a short sense, so you have teams in the cloud, it will connect to ng Rock. it will pass through the firewall or the network address translation of your companies or your enterprise environment. If you open it up, because yeah, you can still, there are security measures against it, but you can open it up. And then you can on your local machine develop. I'll show you uh, to make it a little bit simpler. So I have my local host here. So if you type in your machine, local host this, it will never work, of course. But I ran uh, ng walk, so uh, let's see. It's just, I'll open up, wait, I'll go to the website. So you go to the website, you download, you press download, you get like this really small executable file, that's it. When you're running this executable file, just go to the command line and just say ng rock, and wait, I have the command here. Okay. I always put it in my web.config so I don't forget. So here's the command. So what does this do? Well, I start up ng rock. Oh, just one will be enough. And I say, okay, everything that goes to this endpoint, so HTTP and then this port, we, so no. So set me up an HTTP endpoint somewhere in the cloud. It will need to redirect to 3979. Why? Because if I go here, this is 3979. And for Teams, that's especially for Teams because, okay, we need to rewrite the host header to localhost 
3979. But that's you can find that in documentation how it's called, how it works, but it's pretty basic. So when once you create the entry, you get this. As you can see here, I got this random, I uh, random. It's always .ngwork.io, but they just put a number in, in front of it. So I get this URL. And this URL is in the cloud. So if I go to this URL, it will start redirecting me to my local host, as you can see here. So it just redirected me. I'll see if I can refresh again and then show you. It's running. There we go. See, you can see it. It's running with the connections open. So this will redirect something in the cloud. So if I give this URL to you guys, you can all run this website on my local machine. As you can see here, if I stop this solution, so now nothing is running. If I go to, oh, there we go. If I go to, what did I, oh ah, yeah. This URL, there's nothing living. So my, see, my development machine is not running. So it could not establish a correct tunnel. As you can see here, yeah, didn't come, didn't pass through. There was no HTTP local host 3979. So it couldn't pass through. So that's why we need ngwalk. And this way you can uh, tell teams, okay, teams, go to this URL and don't go to localhost 3979, and then you can proceed with developing against teams. Now, that was it. I hope this was, we're gonna keep it small and not too much because uh, yeah, it's getting quite deep in teams development. So set up your development environment if you're starting out with teams and uh, join me for the next European Teams user group meeting for a deeper dive. And that way, next time we're gonna start really building bots and tabs and teams and going further and further. So Adam, ah yeah, right. My name was Rick and if you have any questions, just let the guys know or contact me to email or Twitter or whatever you want. All right, thank you. That was great. I actually, I start building and um, uh, developing myself just like on a very uh, non-skilled level. I build a Q and A bot in Teams. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's company. always. Yeah, they're like uh, you know the tutorials you can see like everywhere, but uh, it's really fun though. So I, yeah, yeah, the added value of a Q and A bot is like endless. Yeah, if you put yeah. in the correct amount of data, then it's yeah. Yeah, it's all about the data, you know. Yeah, how good it will be. Uh, all right. Uh, Besa? Yes. Yes. Are you ready for your <coughs> team's uh, tips and tricks? We have some oh, new, uh, drop, uh, new uh, people dropping in during the session. Um, welcome. Uh, we're going to have Besa open and uh, doing a presentation on team's tips and tricks right now. So you're ready, Besa? Yes. Let me just find my team so I can start sharing my screen. Ready. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, that, thank you, Ricky. Uh, it was a very fast-paced uh, how to get started on the development. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, development and, I always uh, move fast. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's great. Uh, and uh, I thought I have the fast-paced part, but uh, yeah, it was you <laughs> this time. So uh, let's just say we have some base tips, practices, and tricks. Uh, basically, I call this Teams Kung Fu because there's some, most likely going to be something new for everyone. And, uh, but of course, it can happen that somebody is already uh, deep enough in the Zen level about the Kung Fu. So let's see. It will be interesting to hear if there was something new, uh, new after this uh, after, after after this session. All right, but I'm Vesan Opanen. Uh, usually I call myself Vesku. That's the usual nickname for for Finnish men who are named Vesa. And uh, so there's only some Vesas already. Uh, in the SharePoint uh, slash Teams uh, general anyway. Um, so I was confused to Vesa Yuvon a few times at, at the summit last week. But uh, so I work as a modern workplace consultant as well. So basically that covers Office 365, and Microsoft uh, 365, have everything around it. But uh, for Office Apps and Services MVP, I got in uh, through the Teams uh, HR focus. I've uh, been blogging and uh, telling people about Teams for over a year now. And of course, you are very welcome to uh, connect with me. Uh, welcome to my network. Basically, I can be found in LinkedIn and Twitter and my blog, uh, my Teams Day also has tips and tricks a couple of times a week. 
for Finnish trips, you will most likely need a translator. Uh, so on uh, Thursdays, I put the Finnish text and on Tuesdays, there's English tips. But uh, as I said, I don't have that many slides. So let's go to Teams. All right. I'm already showing uh, that part in there. And I can uh, hide the, the actual meeting window for now and get my, my list uh, showing. Uh, I don't know how very well, uh, well uh, how deep you are in a Teams already, so I start with stretching. Basically, going through, uh, no, letting you to notice that there is your picture here, as Rick was actually showing. And here you can set your status, and here you get the save messages. And of course, you get to your settings from here. And settings are important because, uh, of course, you uh, put the default behavior of the application here. Does it auto start? Does it, do you have a dark mode? Uh, or, or is it a, a default chat up for your office? And language, of course, and for the keyboard languages, uh, I have now everything set to English, but usually it's going to be, it can be a Finnish uh, app language because it uh, applies to the date and time format as well. But to keep for keyboard shortcuts, I might use the German uh, German keyboard version, uh, Deutsch version. Uh, on the privacy, if you want to bypass the do not disturb more, you can go there, but the important stuff is the notifications. Uh, if you are just starting with the teams, always go to the notification and set them to your liking so you don't get through uh, enough or too much email. And as for devices, you can set the default devices from here. Permissions uh, that are still upcoming features, you can add uh, their permission to use camera. But the fun stuff is, of course, the ringtones. This is uh, very new, so you can set your calling, uh, calling voice, uh, so whatever you want to use. Uh, as a kind of a ringtone when somebody is calling you in Teams. Okay, that's a, a bit of starting stretching. And then, because most likely not everyone is going to see uh, details in the screen, uh, you have to remember there's a uh, you know, Zoom option, which uh, uh, kind of repositions the controls as well, but I can go into more deeper Zoom so you can actually uh, see more details in here. Whenever you are presenting something, just uh, make sure that uh, you have a correct Zoom level. And the easy one is the activity feed. As you know, you have a filter here. And you can see who has admission to you, uh, who has replied to you, or who has liked some of your messages or hasn't liked. And there's, then there's the my activity, whatever I has been doing actually in here as well. Uh, this is easily to kind of overlook, so you don't necessarily use the filter, uh, even if it's there, because on the default zoom, it's not that large. Okay, on the moving to chat, uh, we have this meeting group here, and uh, as you see, I have only, only the recent ones, ones in this, but as uh, Rick pointed out, the three dots, the three dots in Teams everywhere are menus to something. These are very good to remember. So if I want to kind of pin something on top, uh, the, then I can get into these chats more easily later. And this is actually a meeting. And uh, in a Teams meeting, you can have 250 participants. So in a sense, I can have a chat with 250 people. And so, and if I pin it here, then uh, I can access the chat even half a year later if, if I want to. Uh, because it takes a month or two or something like that, and then the recent chats disappear. But if it's pinned, it will stay there. Of course, you can find it by, by a search, but uh, meanwhile, you have to kind of uh, pin them at, uh, so they are really useful. So I can put some chats here or people I want to chat usually. Uh, on the top uh, on the top of chats. Uh, there's also some other options. Uh, you can opt out to the opt in to leave the chat. So I don't want to chat with you guys anymore. Uh, I could do it actually uh, to this meeting as well, but uh, for some reason I don't want to do it. And uh, as you can see, there's also uh, the option to mute the chat. If you have a very active channel, always remember to mute the chat so you don't uh, get annoyed. 
And in here, when these are not pinned, you can also uh, choose to kind of the hide an existing chat if you want to. So, so it disappears and making it more easier for you to work. Uh, at least on my work, I usually have a lot of chats here and mostly on reason, but uh, I can clear out the view just uh, to leave the pinned one I, I want to really use. And uh, when I'm there's the uh, European teams, uh, then Dragon Stylers, yeah, uh, some chat groups, these actually have both the same number of participants. So if I go ahead and create a new chat or press Ctrl N, I can put uh, Amy and Shift here. This is my demo environment, as you can guess. And I put here, uh, uh, let's say, European group uh, as a um, group name. So and say hi. Then uh, I can actually have different conversation with the same people, uh, but uh, they are kind of different chat threads or different chat groups and on the different topics. So that's uh, occasionally needed. You may have some kind of a group that focuses on some other topic and then you just accidentally have the same number, uh, same people in and you want to talk about something else. So you can separate these chat groups with the name. Name is good. Or, uh, that can be, uh, should be used. And then there's the contacts part. Uh, you have the favorites. You can put uh, put favorites or uh, there, so it's they are easily to see. You can or easy to see. You can see their status, or I can add them, of course, later here. I can put uh, shift worker there, and I uh, put my put the Patrick there. Yeah, this is on a Star Trek team, and this is a dem a, dem a demo environment, and so I can see on what kind of status they have. Are they available or not at all? And of course, if I have, if I want to, I can create contact groups. So I, it's just not favorites or not favorites. This can be a, a European user group. But I don't have, um, I didn't put up the emails for, um, let's say, Adam. But I have the Chris here. Let's see if I can just uh, copy that off. And uh, I can add externals to these groups as well. Well, so I can just add Chris there and I can add uh, internals as well. If I want to, I can put here, let's put the infamous Patrick. And, and uh, so I can have different groups for different projects if I want to see the people's status. And for internal people like Patrick, I can uh, put on the notifications whenever somebody is away online or not. That can be done from here, or I can actually go to the settings and uh, notifications and go all the way down and manage the notification of people and, and start adding Amy in there and I can uh, get a notification every time Amy is uh, coming online or not and it shows up here as well. <clears throat> okay so these are uh, I like these contact groups because you can uh, really put people on different groups to see the status. Are they online? Are they offline? This was the, something that was very easy to do in Skype client. And so recently this has have become available for Teams as well. Okay. Uh, something you may have noticed, I actually use emojis in here in the Teams and channel names. So I can go ahead and if I want to do that, let's just edit the team, uh, go to the team name and press Windows dot. And I can start finding an emoji. Uh, I don't think the enterprise is here or uh, even a starship, but uh, something. Uh, okay, this, this can be equivalent of starship this time. So I can uh, apply the emojis to these names. This is. Uh, something you can do to uh, make the teams and channels to stand out. You can't rename general channel, but you can put this, this uh, into this, uh, the other channel names. And if you put it in the front, that's always kind of a, mm, uh, interesting because these have some kind of a, uh, kind of a, a sorting code. So, uh, usually, if you put the emojis in front of this, uh, just some channel names, they will be here presented first because these are already always sorted out in a 
alphanumerical order. So, so you can uh, place them at the end or place them in, in the beginning or combine them with names if you want. So if I actually want these techniques to be in front, I could uh, actually uh, just do it this way. So I take the coffee cup away from there and put, put in here and it will switch directions or use zeros and ones and etc. if you if you want to. Uh, this is uh, making this, I don't know, a bit more fun. And if you use the, okay, I can't get it from there. Let's see where I hit it. Uh, let's go for Amy. I'm going to change my uh, identity. I do that a lot. So try not to get confused. This is now the Amy. <laughs> Amy ticket uh, talking. Uh, I haven't been here before, but I can just go to the uh, go to the uh, SharePoint side and uh, zoom a bit, so you, so you can see that the SharePoint side is the name is reflected in here and it's reflected in uh, in the uh, folder names as well. Uh, if you are going to handle these uh, channel uh, teams and channels uh, with lots of PowerShell, then you might not want to do this. Uh, that's the kind of a thing you, you uh, that's when you have to kind of not, uh, don't use the emojis if you're trying to enter the channel name on the command line. It's not going to work. Uh, so, but if you are getting the channel names via uh, gets and then manipulating with IDs, then, then it's going to work with powers. But a bit of warning there. But they are fun, they look good, and, and so so I, that's the reason I like them. Okay, let's get some people into these uh, projects. I, I have the uh, 1701D here, and I can see, let's see who I have here. I don't have any members of quests. So I have two ways, uh, three ways to invite people here, the traditional add member, uh, or if I want to announce this project, publicly, let's say in the internet, in the, I send an email, no, I don't want to do that, but I put the news in the internet. Here's the list of latest projects. If you are interested, please join up. This is a public team, so, so it can be easily joined. So if I go to three dots, get the link to team, I, I copy this link and I go for Amy and uh, uh, just go to the browser and have that link and let uh, Amy to uh, join in. Let's not open uh, that one. Let's uh, I just open the other uh, instance of Teams there from the uh, from the web, and I get a nice announcement. Okay, that I can join this public group, and I press join, and I should be seeing Amy Williams join the team. And from the user perspective, the same thing. It's a public group. It can be jo joined easily with the link. Okay, then I have the other project that is more secretive, it's private, and I can go ahead to manage team. And on the settings, I can get to, to the team code. So if you share these codes in your internet somewhere, okay, here's the list of latest projects, or you send an email or something to uh, people that, okay, uh, I would like you to join my project, and here's the code, you can use it to join in, so you don't have to uh, add every member because if they are not willing to join, then uh, then you are doing basically a, a, a unnecessary job. And uh, I go to the uh, in this time we can go to the uh, Amy as well. I don't see the other project in here as yet. And I can uh, let's just zoom this to as well, and I can join or create a team. And here I have a join team with code. I hit in the code and I'll be there. So I, I, with the code, I can join the private team instantly. And uh, if I take the, uh, take the link to the private team, get link to team, and uh, I go for the Patrick, Patrick guy here, he is in dark mode, and uh, I enter. Uh, this calling there now. I don't want to open the team, so I use the web app, so I don't ruin this uh, meeting session. And 
the team opens and I can join in. But this time uh, it's a request sent. So it's a private team. I didn't send a call, but I, I, this link was published in the internet somewhere. And now I have to go to the team here and I get the notification Patrick requested to join in and I can accept or deny. So you can manage the membership of the private uh, teams this way as well. So, so there are, as you can see, there are several options how you can join the team instead of just adding people in there. Okay, uh, so we are now going back to Kung Fu uh, team. Uh, these are very handy project, but I can, uh, I don't need them right now. Uh, let's go for the basic stuff, uh, which is starting a new conversation. And uh, mostly people just uh, start a conversation here and start writing, etc. But you can, you have to remember that there's this format button. You put the subject here. So people are, it's very, uh, a lot more easier to follow up the conversation when you have a subject. And you have the answers threaded uh, below, below the subject. And here are the, um, the text goes here. Uh, so you can uh, enter a good uh, rich text format text. Uh, I can place in, uh, let's say, different paragraphs, headings, and uh, I can use code snippets and etc. I can actually use a very uh, many different kind of code snippets or text to, to place a, place into this uh, message. Or I can use quotes and make some highlighting and change colors, etc. This is very uh, handy because, of course, I can use the marking board that message as well. And I can go ahead and uh, answer the text here, uh, put some replies. Okay, this is most likely nothing, nothing new uh, for you guys. And I put uh, another reply here. Okay, I made an error. I can press the arrow up and I can go ahead and instantly and go and change uh, message. Yeah, I can change the reply to the previous re reply I just wrote. So basically, it's, it just always uh, affects only just the previous reply you did in there. So it's very easy to uh, fix some uh, typos this way. Okay, and of course, if I in here, uh, I press the shift enter to get, get to the second line so I don't have to uh, write everything in just one line, even if it, this is a quick reply type of box. I can here mention, uh, as you all know, I can start writing the team school for, I can mention the coffee room if I want to, but of course I can mention the current team with just current team. Or I can uh, mention the, let's see, let's go to the coffee room and I write here, Hey, uh, uh, channel, basically, copy room, come here. So, so I don't have to uh, remember the channel name if I don't want. To. I can use this as, as kind of a uh, quick and, uh, I don't know, it's dirty way, but it's kind of a, a shortcut way uh, to mention teams or channels. And especially if you have a com complex channel names and or more uh, several channel names that, that are more like, likely to be uh, have a similar beginning. It's, it's going to be way easier that way. Uh, then you have already all know about the images. Uh, you most know, likely know about GIFs, you know, the stickers and meme, meme, meme generators. And, uh, but uh, you also, do you also know that there's, you can put the double colon or whatever this is called in English. Uh, here and then write some kind of a emoji name. I can put, uh, let's say, uh, the cheese here. I can I can write. Um, or it's their imp. That's great. Imp here, but uh, you may, if you have used it, you may have noticed that if you put a p or something like that, you get an another uh, d. You get another uh, emoji from there. But uh, you can get all past that by writing the next two letters really quickly, like 
put the DO and you can get the door and or um, uh, piece or uh, whatever. So this is actually quite fun way to put the images. In. And if you are just focusing on writing, that may be easier than interrupting your writing and go for the emoji this way. Okay, um, then uh, some of you or many of you may, may know, that, know about the translation. As I, I used Amy Williams account earlier uh, this week to write some Finnish text there. So I can go into the three dots and uh, choose translate. So, so I can get that uh, in, into, into my user interface language. And uh, when you enable translation from the admin center, it's going to take some hours before, or actually it can take even more hours, but let's say, uh, say a day before everyone, everyone can use it. So it, it's, it is not an instant setting that you change it and it goes there. The same applies actually if you go to uh, many of the other settings as well. Uh, for example, when you are controlling the fun stuff and you want to choose which kind of content is allowed, uh, the default is moderate, but if you want to put it to strict or all content, then it's going to take again some uh, hours or a day before you can actually do those changes in Teams. So, so these settings uh, roll out through several hours. And as you may have actually seen, the praise is rolling out uh, to all tenants now. So we can we can send, uh, of course, a nice coaching praise for Patrick and and let's say for Amy, Amy here. Good job. So I can send a kudos or praises uh, just like in Jammer or you can do it in LinkedIn to everyone, everyone and they get a notification about uh, that they have been given, uh, given some uh, uh, mentions and, and actually some praises. So, so they can be seen on the activity feed. But there isn't a, just a praise uh, setting yet. It's just about draw, doing the at mention type. Uh, something uh, you may notice or not, uh, when you are usually when you create a new uh, channel, you have the wiki library. Yes, I have the wiki library there as well. And I remove it. Uh, please, or use one node usually for wikis. Uh, I have two reasons for that. Uh, until those things change, uh, the, the, then I of course can reevaluate the wikis again there because they are very fast to use. But the thing is that uh, if you remove a wiki, a wiki from here, uh, you have the wiki tab and then you have some content and somebody removes it accidentally, you never get it back. And the version controlling is also not happening, so Wiki only leaves just the, only the latest version basically is alive. Uh, it has the SharePoint version versioning in the behind, but the teams usually overrides the latest version very easily. I haven't checked it for a while, but uh, it seems that it's uh, still the case. But uh, uh, so, uh, and at least. Basically, the retention part that you can't get the remote wiki back. Uh, that's oh, yeah, kind of a uh, reason enough not to use it in production. But even though it's very, very easy to use otherwise, and it's very quick. And of course, one notes can be synced to offline as well. Uh, so, so you are working on a project um, and you want to uh, message somebody or message uh, some other group. Uh, uh, from uh, directly from your uh, working environment. So I can be in, in the project, I could be in files, I can, okay, this doesn't have any files, but I could start uh, writing a message, hey, Patrick, I need you to, uh, you, uh, to do something. So you can just add mention uh, the person's name here at the search bar. It, uh, for it's sending the message for a while and then it disappears. Or I can uh, mention actually the group from, uh, well, I can uh, write, uh, send a message to the group. 
And I have to check because I don't remember the, uh, our meeting exactly name. It's not, so it's Euro Teams UG meet. So let's go back here and I can write uh, to this meeting as well as well. Um, <clears throat> Uh, a message. So I can put put in short messages uh, directly from where I work into persons, into uh, group chats, uh, into meetings. They just have to exist in my chat earlier. So I can't kind of pick up a new guy I haven't who I haven't messaged before, and because he won't be in the list. But uh, from the uh, if I had exchanged some messages or I, I was involved in theirs, then I can use that as I had mentioned. And of course, when we are at the search bar, uh, we can get there with Control E uh, and uh, then uh, press slash for commands. So we can see very uh, uh, useful commands here. Sadly, many of these are translated. So if you are using a native language UI, then you have different names for this. Some work, some don't. What I liked in the English version, basically, one of these is D&D. &D. So uh, that's very uh, uh, quick, to, uh, quick to put. Or I can just tell them, okay, I'm busy. Uh, so I'm changing my status uh, uh, very rapidly. Or, uh, of course, and if I need to call someone, uh, let's... Uh, not call use, uh, using this. I, uh, so I might. I'm afraid I might just break this meeting up. Uh, I can call the Amy from uh, directly from here. So Patrick is starting to call Amy Williams, and and Amy uh, might see the call, but for some reason the Chrome is not receiving uh, receiving that call. No, actually, it's ringing on my. Phone. Mm. Let's see, it's not on yet. Mm. The reflector. Um, okay. Let's just scan to connect. Um, let's get my. Yes, let's reconnect and get the uh, air more code here and try that again. No. Okay, I was hoping to show some something in there, but I won't be showing it now. That demo effect hit uh, really nicely with, with the airmo. Okay, uh, but anyway, I can see the missed call done. It was calling on my, on my phone and it, it was easy to call. And there's the new call application as well that's coming uh, more or less available uh, into tenants so once you make your first call so if you don't see the calls here you can use this slash call so if you are using edge or desktop uh, version then directly from the command uh, search bar and i can see my call history and i can see my contacts whoever i want to Add here, so Patrick's missing. Let's uh, add him here. This works for internal. No, well, is my uh, okay? Oh, is Patrick already in there? Come on, Patrick. Okay, Patrick's too new. He's not. Uh, I just created it before this uh, session. Okay, but uh, I can make a call directly from there. I don't know why it should be seen, visible there. But our mega speed dial for uh, people I kind of uh, did or create new groups and organize people in groups. So you can, again, you have another view for people's uh, status. I, I really like this uh, st status messages here. So I can see that uh, if I go to calls, I can see who's busy, who's uh, doing what. I can see Chris is busy. And, Etc. Uh, one other thing about statuses is that uh, you can set your status message. Uh, busy for an hour, you can make a custom message and set for how long 
uh, the message is displayed. So I, I can put the put in here. So I'm, I'll be it will it will be displayed until I, uh, one hour at 7 p.m. Finnish time, and and then other people can hopefully see, uh, see my status if I go to. Okay, I was that was the uh, one of the European groups. Here I can actually see the status here busy for an hour. For some reason, there's one hour gap, but I don't know about that. The meetings uh, for this, I jump into uh, Patrick because I have to use Edge to get into meetings, so I can create a meeting inside the Teams meeting. So let's see how my connections will work. I can join the uh, the other meeting. No, don't do that to me. Uh, let's try this one. Yes. Okay. This is fun, actually. Uh, but I'm going to uh, turn these devices on, and as you can see, there's the other uh, meeting meeting join option as well. If I put the audio off. And before I go there, I can uh, show a bit more settings if I uh, open. Uh, this meeting window, uh, because I already have. Hey, hello, Rick. I can see you. <laughs> see, see you from there. Uh, so the sharing and video and microphone and uh, sharing button is here. But also, uh, don't forget to check these uh, options. I have the background blur on. I have. I can use the keyboard, keypad, or I can turn off the incoming video. If you have a network issues, uh, slowness on the computer, I recommend putting the incoming video off, so you, it's going to be saving a lot more bandwidth for you. But uh, uh, blurring, again, uh, you can use this, or if you're a pro, you can use uh, shift Control p to turn bl blurring on or, or on or off. So, so it's very fast, as, uh, if you remember the shortcut. Uh, way faster than going to more access. And for those uh, who don't, who are not new to the Teams, uh, you notice the other controls are up here. So you can go ahead and change the camera. You can uh, change the speaker settings. You can see, see who's online uh, here, and you can put the mute to everyone else if, if needed. And then there's the uh, chat as well. Okay, I managed to write write in the chat. Excellent. Uh, too many, so many identities going on, so even I can get confused now and then. Okay, but this is not uh, uh, the meetings part. I, I was uh, uh, showing it then. I will join the meeting with as uh, Patrick, and uh, hopefully everything stays online. Yes, everything is is here. I'm only one here. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm going to do this is basically I want to open share tray and uh, and showing something new, which is the whiteboard. So when you go to the meeting and if you have whiteboard enabled from admin center, again it can take hour, hours or day before the whiteboard actually, or a couple of days before it appears in your share tray. But once it appears, I can go ahead and choose. To go to the uh, whiteboard, I played around with this a bit earlier, so there should be some drawings in here. There, it's opening the, this meeting related whiteboard. I can uh, put something in there. Uh, this is not very kind of um, uh, great to uh, write or or um, draw, but it's something. But this is only usable from within your organization. You can. Uh, share the whiteboard with, for example, in this meeting, I can share the whiteboard so that you all could participate in there. There are still limits. But uh, there's the link, uh, so I can copy to the web web part or uh, to clipboard so I can access it from the browser. It will be more usable once the sharing control is there, but now it's more reasonable to open the whiteboard app. And uh, this is uh, already authenticated with my other account in this the same meeting. My 
the best school account is also in this in this meeting so i can use the whiteboard i can start actually putting more uh, uh let's say no i can't uh, draw a lot but as you can see from the background it's everything is happening simultaneously so or near, nearly simultaneously so we can see who's doing and what and um, so i can have more tools available for me uh, from here i can put some text or paste actually or or the other parts or even an image or just uh, post it putting a post it there actually i can put them and everybody online can view them but they can't really manipulate those parts so i recommend using the whiteboard app uh, along with the whiteboard it's going to be way more easier okay let's see if my uh, share tray uh, okay it's now showing my uh, powerpoint i'm sharing it from this because uh, uh, no i don't want to uh, switch uh, basically, if when you are sharing uh, your screen and recording a Teams meeting, the, uh, the screen is getting uh, saved. So I'm sharing my desktop here. So, so this is going to be in the recording. But if I'm going to share the PowerPoint, just like I did now, luckily from the meeting inside meeting, then the PowerPoint is not actually going to be in the recording. Only the voice is going to be there. So, so that's a uh, kind of a drawback uh, now and then when you are. Uh, uh, so, so if you think that the white uh, kind of a, um, uh, if if you are sharing a presentation, you you may think that it's going to be recorded, uh, and it won't be. So that's kind of a thing to re good to remember that you should be sharing your uh, desktop. So it's good to have at least two screens uh, when doing that. Okay, let's see if I can uh, finally uh, put on the uh, 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 screen for my mobile device. And as you can see, I'm uh, I'm Patrick is sharing that uh, uh, sharing that PowerPoint from the meeting, and I can go ahead and join. Uh, the Kung Fu meeting. Yes, hello, and uh, mic is off. Uh, join now. Uh, let's see if I can. Okay, I'm at the meeting and I should be seeing uh, the PowerPoint soon. As you can see, it's loading. Takes a while, and yeah, okay. I can go ahead and uh, uh, I can browse the okay, not from, from there. Uh, I can browse uh, the slides because the, the, the slides have been shared. Uh, the PowerPoint has been saved, so I, I can browse the slides in my mobile device. So I basically use these uh, arrows here, and I can go to the presenter. Uh, okay, again, no clickback. So, so to see what the what the slide the pres slide presenter is talking about. So this is very easy. Uh, but the fun thing is to take control. Uh, if I I can be in the same meeting with my same account, uh, so I can share the desktop, uh, the presentation uh, from my desktop, and then I go, can go to the mobile device and press take control. And yes, I want to take control, and and it's going to tell me that okay, another two is user to control. So I now have a remote controller for my presentation. I can basically click the presentation through here in my mobile phone. I guess that's a kind of a cool stuff you can do. You don't necessarily know about this. <clears throat> OK, uh, but of course, when now that we are on mobile, I can st show, start showing uh, what else is fun with the mobile device. Uh, you can see it, uh, missed call. Uh, I did earlier, I can see the chat, I can see the teams. Wait a minute, uh, I can actually see the uh, channels that have the la latest activity in, in Teams as well, in this chat screen. And this is done uh, via the uh, hamburger menu and going to the settings. 
and uh, going to the general, uh, I can sh select to show channels in the chat list. So it is very handy if you want to just see what, what's happening in channels alongside with the chat. And uh, when we were in the settings, there's the notifications. It's telling me notifications are on. Uh, remember to check the uh, quiet hours. This is fun to use two devices at the same time. I can put the daily quiet hours. So basically, if I don't want the teams to disturb me with any notifications in the evening, I can do this. Uh, put them to start at eight, stand at seven, fine. And I can go to the quiet days and I can set, okay, don't bother me on Sunday and uh, Saturday. Or if you are on vacation, you may want to uh, take all the days here because then, then you can, uh, you can don't have to sign off teams. And if you need to go there for some reason, you can go there, but the teams doesn't bother you with the notifications. I guess that's the kind of thing you don't get active notifications on your phone. Uh, other stuff you can do from notifications uh, is also to configure notifications part. Uh, as that I can go here and select that what kind of notifications I want on the phone. So take control of your teams. Uh, don't let teams control you too much on this. So so you can. Uh, kind of balance uh, the thing that how much you want to see this stuff on your phone. Uh, some, something else, um, I can go to the uh, general part and let's say I can write a message in here and start a new conversation. And there's the three dots again, what's there? Hey, I can brace uh, from mobile as well. Uh, let's see, let's tell. Uh, uh, Patrick, that he is uh, very uh, creative. And I can send the uh, praise uh, from my mobile. What else was there? I can share my location. I can share my actual location, or I can go and say, let's just put Turku Castle in there. Yes, let's use that and uh, share my location. I'm there. And uh, how does it look in here? Uh, I have the messages. Okay, I, I can actually see the uh, map as well. And uh, there's the praise. And one more uh, fun stuff about the mobile is uh, the voice uh, message. So I can record a voice message just by pressing the microphone and recording a voice message. So so I don't if I don't have a chance to write or something like that, I can just uh, uh, make the this is the familiar feature from other messaging apps as well. So voice messages are great. I can trash it or I can uh, send it. What else? Uh, well, the location and of course the emoticons are there uh, in case you hadn't noticed that they are hidden behind the, behind the three dots. And um, when I'm going back to the main navigation, I can see my meetings, I can see my teams, and then there's this uh, small thing. I can draw it up and uh, stay there. Yes, I can get into my saved messages, files, saved organization, camera, whatever, and I can put the edit so I can uh, make this my own. If I if I need shifts all the time, I just want to uh, move shifts up there, and then something else gets removed. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, you can, of course, ask questions, but that was a kind of a fast, fast stuff into mobile uh, view as well, because I, I think this is kind of fun to show how it works on mobile. I personally use a lot this mobile device part. But perhaps I was exceeding my time. I have no idea. It depends how uh, angry Adam looks. Uh, but uh, okay, I think I just uh, get it back to uh, Adam and Chris. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, hope you can all hear me. Yeah. Two great sessions. I yeah, think there was that, quite uh, a lot of uh, tricks there. There was. There was. I, you know, I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to rewatch it better tonight to be able to cover every single one that I had in there. I mean, was there anything new? I have to ask. This is what I want to know. Do you, do you know? I didn't know about um, the double dots 
in the actual light and, and putting that through so that you could show images within that. I didn't know that at all. And, no. you know, I didn't know about the images and the actual team names either. Completely new. And I, I, I've not even read that in documentation. I was just like, what? I couldn't kind of couldn't believe it. I was like, and, you know, there's going to be, well, probably about a dozen people in my organization who's going to want to know about that. Um, I'm also going to be referring our dev to uh, to Rick's session um to to get them up to speed and on on some apps that they can build they're probably um they've already got a ton of nine months worth of work so you know this is going to probably float to the top for them i i just want to say guys i mean that they are two amazing sessions i know that we're yeah. going to uh be you know got this as a recording um i just so i want to thank you so much for participating today uh, and for everyone uh, who came along to the sessions we hope to see you next month Rick's was part of a series that's going to be next month. We're yep. definitely going to be asking Vesku back again at a later date, you know. So, uh, probably what do you think? Of... Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, um, so, and I think this has been a brilliant uh, kickoff for the European Teams user group. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. So, just to notify everyone, um, the next session is on Thursday, the 25th of April. Um, I think that's on the last slide. There. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Slide now? So it's 3 p.m. GMT. Uh, I think for a lot of people that are here today, that's uh, you know 4 p.m. Uh, mid-European time. Um, and then we plan to do these monthly, but we generally speaking, it will be on the last Thursday um, of every month at 3 p.m. We want to kind of be consistent with that. Um, and again, we'll have two to three speakers in April. Rick is going to, and, and, and we're, we're talking to other speakers. But if you yourselves um, uh, can think that you can speak and, and, and present and you have something to share with the rest of us, then by all means, please contact us and, and, and we'll help you to um, put together your session. We'll help you to, you know, for a platform that you can share with others. And if, if you're looking for a for a voice or a, an interesting idea, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. So so once again, I just want to say thank you ever so much for everyone. Um, I'm just so excited about looking to build this community over the, uh, you know, the next uh, year or, or two. And I know Adam does as well. And um, with Vescu and Rick on board and, and I look forward to seeing you, you know, all of you more in later meetings, um, then it's going to be a fun time. So thank you very much. Have a great evening and a great yeah. weekend and look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, yeah. Cool. thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. bye.